Welcome to the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay. This is your positive path for spiritual living. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Anthony. Um, I have a special connection to that song, and I think it's so appropriate for what we're living through right now. I actually um, used that song when I was 17 years old in what I consider to have been my first real talk. I was uh, leading a high school retreat and talking about some challenges and difficulties that I was experiencing and how I knew God was the bridge over my troubled waters. And... I didn't even have an inkling of the faith that I have now in that statement, in that truth. And so I listened to that and I realized and recognized the ways in which I have grown and the ways in which humanity is also growing and evolving. And yes, God is that bridge over troubled waters for us. And yes, we are also required during these times, these troubled times to really look within and see what is ours to do, which is why I'm really grateful that we are in a space where I can invite you and actually more than that, ask you to join me and your spiritual community in having some of the tough, difficult, challenging, and also loving and light-filled conversations that we need to have in moments like this. I want to invite you to join us in our Healing Racism uh, sessions that we are getting started. They begin on Saturday, June 20th, next Saturday. And myself, Ray Melton, the Advocacy Committee, Reverend Chris, we all want you to be part of these conversations where we're going to be looking and exploring the ways in which we have intentionally and unintentionally consciously and unconsciously unconsciously been a part of a system a system of division a system of racism and how we have supported it in many ways and how we have been affected by it in so many deep ways this is part of the healing that is being asked of us in this moment and i really invite you and ask you to join me in being a part of the healing itself. More information is on our website. Um, I'm sure there's a link in the comment section below. I truly have a vision that I will see you being a part of it. So join me for that. So (laughs) I shared with you, it was going to be an emotional day for me because there is so much going on uh, for me and really for humanity. This is my... uh, 15th year anniversary on the staff of Unity on the Bay. It is the conclusion and the honoring of our 30 Days of Fearless Li- to Fearless Living program. And also, you know, we're, we're not blind to the things that we are witnessing in the world, the pain and the hope, the anger and the love. And so I can't help but reflect not only on these last 30 days of the Fearless Living program, but to really reflect on my life in ministry, really. And uh, so you'll get a, I hope you get a kick out of this. I actually looked up the first talk that I did at Unity on the Bay and uh, not backed by popular demand. Um, I want to share with you the first joke that I shared from the platform when speaking on a Sunday. You ready for this? (laughs) So after a church service on a Sunday morning, a young boy suddenly announces to his mother, Mom, I've decided to become a minister when I grow up. And the mom was really excited and just asked, well, that's great. What made you decide that? Well, said the little boy, I've had to go to church on Sundays, and if I have to continue doing it, I'd rather stand up there and yell than sit down here and listen. I don't know how that played with you. (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) you know, I hope that in my time of sharing with you and having the honor of speaking with you as the Associate Minister of Unity on the Bay, that I've done a little bit of both, that I've 
yelled or shared the things that I'm sitting with, struggling with, the principles that have worked in my life that I have shared with you, um, the questions that are in me. And I also trust that through this time, I've learned to listen more deeply. Listen to spirit in prayer and in meditation. Listen to spirit more deeply through Reverend Chris, through the amazing music of Dale and our music ministry, to really listen to spirit speaking to me through each and every one of you and through the ways in which the world is really calling out to be heard. And so I trust that I've been able to do just that in deeper and more expansive ways and that through that I have been able to or I recognize that through that I've been able to more effectively and purposefully move from a place of fear into a place of faith, to move from a place of fear of the unknown. Isn't that what the world is asking of us in this moment, to move away from the fear of the unknown, fear of each other, fear of not being good enough, of not being worthy, to a place of knowing and trusting the faith that is within us, that we are never alone, that the very Spirit of God is alive through and as us, that God is fully present in trust and faith, that we are the ones that we have been waiting for to be and do the things that we have been waiting for, trusting that each life experience is allowing us to birth a new reality. From Isaiah chapter 66, verse 9, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. That what we are experiencing, what we may experience in our own lives that people may not even recognize, and what we are experiencing collectively, the pain, the hurt, the shame, the guilt that we may experience that there is something greater being birthed through that and that we can trust it. I'll tell you, when I walked into Unity on the Bay 18 years ago, I didn't even realize the level of pain that I was living from. I was expressing it through being lost in excessive drinking and partying and sarcasm that cut and hurt people through negative self-talk, through difficult and challenging relationships with my family, with my friends. It was being expressed through the very ways in which I didn't believe that I could live heaven on earth. I remember so distinctly um, feeling like when things were going well, that the other shoe was going to drop. And I'm grateful and lucky that looking back on it, I am able to see that there has been growth, that there has been a healing of some of that pain. And that pain was truly rooted in fear. And some of that pain that remains is truly rooted in fear. Fear of who I was, fear of not measuring up to who I thought I needed to be, right? Fear of not being good enough because what I had claimed would make me good enough, I wasn't really living. And so in these moments where we can look back and see the ways in which those fears may have shaped us, but those fears may have also brought us to places like unity on the bay, places like meditation and prayer, things that have supported us in knowing our worth and knowing our truth, to be able to trust and have some comfort in knowing that God will make something good of what we are living, that we, as the expressions of the divine, will make something good of what we have in the past allowed us to hold us back or to limit us. We, what we are experiencing is not only the manifestations of the things that we have faith in, it is the experiences of the things that we have fear about. And so that's why it's so special that we embarked on this 30-day journey uh, to fearless living and that we did it together and that we focused on healing those fears. So last weekend, 
We had a gathering of some of those individuals that went through the program with us, and we shared the things that were revealed to us in those experiences and in the readings and the inspirations. And I'll tell you that the one thing that I heard and saw was the level of gratitude in each and every one of us for this spiritual community that creates the spaces to heal, that creates the foundation by which we can do the hard work of looking at those fears and knowing that there is something deeper and better and more expansive, the moments that we can release that fear and move deeper into faith. And so the ways in which I was inspired in those conversations, the ways in which I continually um, get inspired and surprised by the inspiration that I received from this community hasn't shifted or changed since the first day that I arrived at Unity on the Bay. I lean on this community. I lean on the strength, the power, the faith that is this community and invite you to lean on it in these times especially. We lean on the energy that has been created over decades in this space by the commitment that each of us have brought to this moment to experience and see our desire to know God more deeply. We are rooted in that, and ourselves, we can lean on it in times when we may not remember. It is the energy that has been created in the moments that we have said yes to living our powerful principles that God is present. We may not see, we may not feel this presence, but the presence of good is there. The presence of love and comfort is there. That we are all sacred. That we are all worthy. That we are all expressions of the divine. That we can create the life that we have been wanting to experience. That we can consciously create that life. It reminds me of Neil Donald Walsh, one of the quotes that really has touched me in the time that I have been in ministry is, a life lived of chance is a life of unconscious creation. A life lived of choice is a life of conscious action. And that has brought me to conscious action in my own life. The principles to know that in prayer and in meditation, we can experience such a deep awareness, a deep connection, and really allow ourselves to feel the presence of the divine that we are. And the fifth one, and you know that I love this principle because it's the principle of knowing that we got to live it and that it may not always look perfect the way that we express it. We may not always feel like it measured up, but you know what, Unity on the Bay? We keep trying, and we keep trying, and we keep trying, and that to me is the sign of a community of individuals that are committed to a different way of living, that we keep trying, and the world is asking us to not give up, to keep trying, and to try in deeper and more inclusive ways. It is important that we really step into embodying and living our truth in greater ways. Now, last weekend, we were part of the prayer rally for change. We were living our truth in those moments. We were living our truth as agents of peace, as agents of love and unity. I saw it in the ways in which we honored each other, not only by being present and being vocal about what we were there to do, even in honoring our space and honoring our safety with the mask and the space. You know, like we really were just there honoring the truth of who we were and honoring each other. I noticed it in the ways in which we weren't spouting any hate, not even hate about hate. We were there to be expressions of love, to be called a voice for love and for light for a humanity and a world that works for all. I realize that it continues, living our truth continues through now 
the work that we are asking you to be a part of, these healing racism workshops and sessions. That is how we live our truth principles. And it continues in the ways in which we connect with each other in deeper and deeper ways, in the ways in which we remember and become more aware that we are the light of the world. I look back. And I've embodied so much more than I thought I ever would. And I know that as a community, we have embodied more than we ever thought we could. I love that here I am continually trying to embody more of the truth of my being. Again, it's just trying and trying looking to embody it in deeper and more expansive ways. And I can't believe the ways in which I have been able to push through the boundaries that I had set for myself, the limitations that I had set for myself. And I know that it is possible for each and every one of us to push through the boundaries of all that we thought we could embody to go even further and embody more and more of our truth, more of God, more of love in this world. And that comes from truly knowing that we aren't just the voice of God, the hands, the feet of God, but that we are the heart of God. That we are the ways in which God makes itself known to humanity. That comes from trusting that Christ nature that we are, that still small voice. And it's that still small voice in one of the days of inspiration from our 30 Days booklet. It was a poem by Martha Smock, Let Your Heart Listen. And it said, I am with you in all experiences of your life. I am the power in you to understand. I am the power in you to forgive. I am the power in you to become. To become. And we have to have the courage and the strength to become it. We have to become more than our fears. One of the other days that really touched me in these 30 days of inspiration was one that was a process. And you guys know I I like practicality. I like processes. And so it really touched me. And I love the way that the authors talked about it, the four-step process uh, to move from fear into faith. And the first one was to dedicate your life to God. To me, that is the commitment, the dedication to a practice And for me, that practice shows up in questions. To be committed in moments when we are facing trials and tribulations, to be committed enough to step back and ask questions. How is God present in this moment? How do I express God here and now? It's a commitment to ask those questions in the face of anything that may be experienced in our lives and in the life of humanity. The second step then, after you ask your questions, is to listen. To listen for the answers, to go within. And for some of us, sometimes that is a 30-minute meditation. For some of us, it's just taking a pause, taking a breath. And listening. To what is ours to do as we step into the third step, which is to have courageous action. Not just to listen to the answers, but to be the answers. To live the answers in bigger and deeper ways. And then I love the fourth step, actually, uh, because I guess I tend to do this myself. And, you know, I used to think it was just second-guessing myself. Um, And um, it could also just be recognizing the need for what they call an enlightened review. Just look back. Be curious about what's next. Ask ourselves, is there more to do? Did I show up the way that I wanted to show up? If I did show up the way that I wanted to show up, how can I do more of that? To be continually asking, if this worked, how can I make more of it and implement more of it in my life? It's important that we ask ourselves these questions and be mindful. Jack Canfield, 
has a quote, and it says, We are at a time in human history when all of us need to step up and have the courage to create the life that we envision, that in our hearts of hearts we know is possible. We all need to tap into our deepest essence, discover our true life purpose, transcend our fears, limiting beliefs and self-doubts, and live lives of passionate expression. When that happens, we will truly create heaven on earth. That is what I believe these moments are calling us into. How can we be that? How can we live more fully in that? How can you and I discover more deeply our life purpose? What is your purpose? How is God uniquely expressing through you? My purpose statement is to boldly and compassionately awaken the human family. If I were to ask you what your purpose is, would you be able to recite something? Would you be able to speak something out loud? Would you be able to, in this moment, speak to it so that it reverberates through the energy field of potentiality and possibilities, lifting up the consciousness of humanity here and now? Do you know your divine purpose? If so, I want to hear it. I want you to speak it out loud right here and right now. I feel that. I feel the shift in the moments when we all can step into it. And I'm in gratitude for the ways in which you know who you are here to be. If you don't have or aren't very clear about your own purpose statement or purpose, just know that I trust that it is alive in you, asking for you to discover it in deep and meaningful ways. And I invite you to consider that it is the ways in which God is uniquely loving and serving all of humanity through you. As Paul says, we are all the body of Christ. Whatever we do, we do it for the body. We do it for the community. And the community is not only inviting us to live out our purposes it is now begging us to it is now asking us to move from fear to faith and faithfully live all that we have come here to live you and i are birthing a new reality yes uh last week when we went into that prayer rally in one of the stops um because we were praying at each of the stops and one of the stops Uh, we prayed a prayer that was um, inspired and referenced by Isaiah 58. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. It is time for all of us to walk in the light. That light is the light that we radiate the moment that we recognize that we have been made for this. We have been made to birth a new reality. We have been birthed ourselves to be the answers to all of the ways in which we are consciously evolving into a deeper understanding of ourselves. And we can walk hand in hand for all to see, for all to experience, for all to be lifted up by the light that we carry, that we are, and that we shine forth. If not now, when? If not us, who? Namaste, unity. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay, a spiritual community located in Miami, Florida. Unity on the Bay is supported by the generosity of its community. If you'd like to make a donation or learn more about Unity on the Bay, please visit unityonthebay.org. You can also follow Unity on the Bay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for even more positive spiritual inspiration. Until next time, thanks for listening and many blessings. Namaste.